happens. Anytime you're in a major, it, it's exciting, but this being the last CSGO major uh, makes it extra special. Our team has worked incredibly hard. They've traveled a lot of miles. I'm really proud of the effort that they've put in. But you've got the best teams in the world and arguably this is the most important event. As long as we play our best Counter-Strike and we see that they're out there gaming with passion, I, I'm gonna be proud of the guys. The last few tournaments, I think we've had some mixed results. I went from not performing so well at Pro League, uh, playing the Blast Showdown. It's always difficult where we have someone in Europe playing on high ping. We've had a little bit of struggles, you know, at some events. I think we haven't necessarily met our expectations fully. Katowice is definitely like the, the peak that we had, and I'd like to play at that peak again. We played really good, but I really liked to have played in front of the crowd there, so that was a bit unfortunate. We unfortunately had a very bad uh, pro league at ESL. Uh, that was very disappointing and had to sort of build ourselves back up again to, to play uh, the RMR qualifier. We definitely didn't expect to do that, especially coming off a Katowice run where we finished top eight. I think it's been a bumpy road before the major, but we had some really good moments like at the RMR. We had a good mo some good moments at pro league. We got a kick in the ass in Melbourne or right before the measure. It made us realize that if we don't, everyone steps up before the measure, it's gonna go bad. It meant a lot to me to qualify for the last CSGO major. It was a really big moment for me, especially because I've only played one major previously. So having a chance to play in a second one and it being the last one really meant a lot to me. Just remember like my heart like racing, just knowing that we finally made the the major putting putting in all the time and effort we have, so it was a it was a really good feeling at that time. A lot of our practice like went into like making sure that we had a good RMR. It's been amazing that we can attend the last major. When I first started my career, it was like a dream to be able to play in a major. And now I think this is my third one now, so it's just like really nice to be here, especially for the last one. I think it's awesome that complexity was at both the first and the last CS:GO major. It's really cool to be in an organization that's been like throughout Counter Strike one of the big names. Yeah, I remember that that Cole roster when I first started playing the game. It's it's pretty vivid, to be honest. I would never expect to have made it this far. Being 14 years old, playing the game, and being 23 now. When I was like 14 or 15, and watching Complexity back then, uh, Complexity is a legendary org, so I'm just glad we could be able to qualify and have their name in the last CSGO major and the first as well. Hogan's uh, t-shirt collection is... Uh, <coughs> Amazing. Yeah. The GOAT. Happy birthday to you. 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 So I don't know when it opens, but here's a little gift from us. Thank you. Enjoy. It says Joyeux anniversaire. It's happy birthday in French. Oh, you're French. Yeah, no, I literally couldn't even read it with the text. I just couldn't even see the letters. I think the white stuff's just chocolate. Is it good? If it is, cut off the slice. That's nice. Game one at the major, first opponent was Gamer Legion. Am I right in saying these two teams have never played each other? Correct. But that's yeah. interesting. We have no data to go off of. We were planning on either going for Inferno or Ancient, and uh, yeah, we were lucky enough to, to get Inferno, which is a really good map for us. I was feeling good. I think the whole team was feeling good. Maybe a little bit nervous because it was the first game of the major. Complexity, Gamer Legion, Inferno, best of one to kick off the Paris Major for both of these teams. And we're going to be live into the pistol rounds. It's all about getting the early game momentum in game, but more psychological momentum. There's no way that you can keep the ball rolling, you have rounds to work with. So I, I'd say we played pretty good at the start. Like taken away from Holzerk here. He notices the jump down. Pistols out as well, looking for the headshot. Uh, Acor and Isaac are left and looking tough for them at the moment. Bomb on the ground and holds up. He knows he's going to be taking down Aco. Great round out of him. Uncontrollables went our way. We won a lot of clutches. I think we won two or three 1v1s and we set ourselves up really well for the second half. What do you even do with that smoke off? Molotov goes in and Isaac is just already here for it. Oh, a little bit of an nice. 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 oh, oh, so find him. Good job. Oh my oh, God. Nice. I think we ended the half 13 2 or 12 3, one of the two. And they got way too close, honestly, for having a big lead like that. JT ready in case they come around the corner. That's the Bomb delivered right at his feet, and then low on health. JT, what a time to step it up for him. 
And Shui on his own out here. He's going to get run down 13 to 2, Jason, at the end of the half. In the second half, though, we were struggling a lot. Almost every single bar round, we were losing guys the first like 10 to 15 seconds. It felt like we were just giving them away due to people just being like a little bit careless, to be honest. Like we weren't using our util or we either didn't have util. But a nade damage. MK9 looking for the aggression and just the nades are out the jump on top. We caught a pause and we're like, let's just try to survive for literally like the first 20, 30 seconds of the round and just play default, see what happens. Just need to make sure we keep it tight in the early rounds so that, so that we can actually trade when they're going for those aggressive plays or we need to stop those aggressive plays with the utility. After speaking in Bayern and just uh, playing passive and making sure that we stay alive till the end round, we, we play a little better. Once taps the bomb, he does have a smoke actually. This is slightly doable, he goes for it again. Oh, now they're nice. spraying down, nice. there's the headshot. 16-11 complexity. The nightmare is over, and they take down Gamer Legion on Inferno. It's always nice to have like a good opening to an event because every event's like a new event, right? Like you don't know how you'll play at the start, so it just feels really good having a win on the board, not being on the back foot from the get go. Thank God we didn't choke. I was thinking of uh, end flashbacks on Nuke. We were up 13-2 and uh, almost lost, but we managed to win 16-14 in that game. So thank God we went to that. Yeah, thoughts after the game was just trying to figure out, I guess, who we were going to play next and also just, you know, having good takeaways from it, but just moving on to the next game. I'm happy you played well, happy we got the win, but just thinking about the next game. Okay, guys, just um, firstly, just to recap the, the first game, like, we did a really good job there of just playing, like, cool, cool, calm and collected CS, like, communicating everything that we need to and doing everything that we need to. Uh, I think, like, we... Obviously, have a really, really good shot. It's going to zero, yeah. We kind of expected G2 to beat the next game if all the other favorites ended up winning, which uh, most of them did and ended up playing G2. It's definitely not a team to underestimate. They have some of the best players in the game on that team. We had a couple hours of prep, actually, because after we beat Gamer Legion, we went back to their hotel. I think, I think, I think the, so. the next fight, when they're trying to go B, the only thing they do is fight back control, so if there's no one there. Blasty did pretty good this time. That like, after the first four matches, we already knew our opponent, which was pretty cool. So like we usually don't find out if we play until midnight, so we can prep really good. But this time we actually was able to prep, so that was great. It is time to continue the battle for a 3-0 run. Floppy says he wants to ruin your pickums, going for that 3-0, but they got to get through G2. Starting on the T side, Complexity looking to bring the fight to G2. In the G2 game, I think we got off to a really slow start. We were getting shut down both at B and at A. They're running dry. Oh, it's back. Oh, that's the bomb, Grim. No, no scope on the <laughs> floppy. Monacy feeling himself as JT tries to take a gamble. It doesn't matter. The bomb's down in mid. The round's over. The round is done. Monacy has won this one already. I took a pause and told Johnny, I think it's better if we just actually stick together so we're ready to react a lot quicker. We were down 7-2 on the T side and we actually brought it back at 1.5, 8-7. So I think we played pretty well on the T side. Awkward for Hauser here. 20 seconds through the flames and into the scope. Does get away with murder onto Monacy. JKS is next challenge. Goes for a quick oh, one. Halzark oh. heating up now as the 1v3 looks real. I think the play that sticks out the most for me in that match was, I think it was my 1v3. Ending of the half that way is always, uh, always a good uh, boost for the team morale. Halzark going to go for the clear. This is gorgeous work from Halzark. Always oh, impressive oh, as Cole will take the lead at the half. I'm not sure when, when, what went wrong. We won a lot of buy rounds and if you win a lot of buy rounds, you, have, you should have a close game. But like we need to win the false buys and the anti equals. Definitely Monacy just kind of shutting us down no matter where we were or where we peaked. Or it always felt like he was there offing us. I remember getting off by him like many times. It's right now, one versus three on this A side of the map, but he's so intently to try and wait for Monacy still ready for it. It's tough to say like whether they had some amazing prep or something, but I think when Monacy just drops 34 kills on you and is always in the right position at the right time, I don't really think that's necessarily prep. I think that's just an individual that's popping off and just having a really good game and that can happen to anyone. He plans to finish this all on his own. 33 frags looking for 34 Monacy. He's definitely here in Paris. Uh, I think after that game, our mentality was still good. Like, we know G2 is like one of the best teams here. And we got nine rounds, a lot of them being bar rounds, so we knew that we played at least decently against one of the best teams. I think getting the G2 game out of the way definitely helped, at least mentally, like knowing that we, we played decent against them, we can probably play a little bit better against other teams. Okay, we have limited time, guys, so let's try to keep it as contained as possible. Um, 
just from last time we played these guys, it was our f**k-ups last time that cost us against these guys. So let's make sure we're on top of our game. Let's make sure we're like we're focused, we're high energy. We make sure we're communicating all of our rotates and everything effectively. Let's not try and f**king solo fight these guys and lose and lose against ecos and shit like that. Like we did against last time. Heading into our next match against Payne, we already played them at the RMR, so we expected to play them on Nuke. And that's exactly how the Vito win. Considering we played the same map against them at the RMR, it was kind of a no-brainer for us. I've had a lot of history playing against Payne uh, due to my uh, attention on Extrasol along with TC and JT. I know we played them a lot in so many different tournaments. As expected, same map as the RMR, so yeah, we're ready. Complexity is such an if statement at the moment still. Right. Like we haven't felt like, you know, Jacob highlighted it. The consistency isn't there to where we don't have to come into this and say, if these guys are on point, if the strategies work, Fang can go nuts, if Halzerk is here. In the match against Payne, we ended up making a lot of mistakes. After winning the pistol, we lost the force buy due to a gap in our smokes. It's, this is some sneaky plays coming in. Beacons here are just hiding at the edge, able to gun down Fang. That's not really something we experienced in Prague. The, the smoke was landing in Prague, it was landing in our previous matches as well, as far as I know. That's something you can find in research as well. That smoke always creates that gap. So, I mean, if you're if your team preparing and you know they throw that smoke, that's an easy gap to go find. Big Zero was apparently abusing it over and over, and we can really fix it because we're just missing Utah on T side. There's that angle again. Yeah. Not aware at the moment. Big Zero, yep, one more. Not even traded. Rinse and repeat from round number two. The mistakes just continued. We lost a 5v2 round where Skulls got a 4k from door. I don't think it was just our mental that was broken, but I also think like they were like so rolling and motivated after that. Absolutely no shot at it here. This is so impressive. Payne are here to play and it's a 16 to 4 victory at the end of it. Absolutely shutting it down. That is comprehensive. I wasn't really expecting a blowout like that, like 16-4, it's pretty just not acceptable really. It's just so sad because you play so bad, like you, you shouldn't play that bad at this stage, like I don't have any words for that. We missed that smoke, we missed up grenades, we missed another smoke, and we can't win new can't throw nades. <laughs> it, we definitely didn't play well that game. Like, they probably played well, but we definitely didn't. We knew the map against Payne was going to be Nuke. We prepared only for Nuke. Um, so to go down, I think it was 16-4, was, was extremely painful. And I really hoped that that would be the trigger to, to spark some life and, and remind people that, you know, we're at, this, at the major and, uh, you know, it's, it's all or nothing. I mean, we can uh, lie to ourselves and say we got unlucky and we lost 2v5 and, uh, and uh, 1v3 or whatever, we can be realistic and decide to step up and actually come to the party for these next two games so we can make it through to the next stage. And it's not going to happen by us just sitting around and hoping hoping for the best. Like, we need to actually show up here. We need to be in this room grinding. I think for me personally, just really upset. I think the other guys as well were just like bleaked out about it. And I think we recovered mentally pretty quickly. Like, we spoke about it. We were ready for the next match after that. We had to stay up uh, quite late because we had to wait till the last game ended. Uh, between Fluxo and Liquid, because uh, we would play the, I think we would play the winner between that game. They made derby again, dude. It's not looking happy coming out the gates. It's not looking happy? All right, see you be there. I don't know. I made derby. You're welcome. Dude. We know what we have to do, man. What do we have to do? It's it's to get out, bro. Yeah, it sucks that the bracket just does this, uh, so we have to face it off against each other at the major, just like last time. The elimination match against two NA teams, it's just, I don't know, this system's kind of funny that way sometimes, but it is what it is. This is an elimination game. Survival once more. Backs against the wall. If the North American hopefuls want to make it through to that legend stage, it's going to be an uphill battle. I think map one started terribly, but we were able to at least get a bunch of rounds going at the end there. Forces OT to acknowledge. Face the shot. Looks for the finish on the spray. Ch chips him down. Now they can combine. And there's a round to be had after all. Floppy and Halzerg not giving up. I think if we won a few more rounds on our CT side, we actually could have won that map. I think we had like a pretty good comeback on our T side, but if you're starting so far down, it's really hard to come back. It almost didn't even feel like we were playing a major. It felt like we were literally just sitting at home playing like an online cash cup or something like that. 16 is found. Took a little longer than they would have liked, but Liquid, they will take their map pick and complexity. 
Gooney having to have a bit of a team talk in preparation for overpass. Like, no pressure on us. We've got nothing to lose. We made the major. That was our goal that we set at the start of the year, was to be here in Paris when May comes around. Now let's see how far we can go. Slices and dices. An ambush for flat as the 13th does come through. Yeah, on fire for sure. They have been for the majority of this one as uh, 13 rounds in a row. And the best complexity of mustard is three kills in a round. I honestly never really felt that like out of control of a match and honestly a very long time if ever. Like, I think we lost to half 15-0. It's so bad you just have to laugh about it. Laugh about it. It's, it's, you can't even defend it. It's at this level. And on our best best map, it's like you, you, you like getting one round on the map you picked. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's so embarrassing. It's only your kinder. It's on the elbow. No, oh, right, there you go. A denial. I don't get sick, you know, bro. Oh, thank God. Okay. Thank God, man. Looks like it's all done, unless. Yeah, no. Nice. Denied as Nitro secures it. Liquid. They'll take it in two. They'll take it convincingly in complexity. They are going to have a very quiet bus ride home. Yeah, so after we lost, I'm sitting there kind of just flabbergasted and just embarrassed about the fact that that's even, a, you know, something that's even being spoken about. That's something I'm looking at my scoreboard like this is a real thing. All the work you put in and, you know, how far you've come and just end it on like a, on a note like that definitely hurts. I'm very disappointed. It's my first major, uh, personally, and I have my worst performing Round event this year, not even close to being like it's by far the worst tournament. That is what hurts me the most, just not being able to step up when it's the most needed for me and my team. All I can think of is them going through instead of us, because they're obviously on a team. We want more legend spots, so that's what I'm thinking about. Is just uh, wanting Liquid to win the next game so we can continue having more legend spots. This is not what I wanted to deliver for the organization. This is not what I expected us to how I expect us to play. It really begins to to open up the question marks about, you know, do we have to change the approach of what we're doing or do we have to change something bigger um, to, to try and bounce back from this? Um, and that, that's never a, an enjoyable um, place to be. I mean, uh, yeah, we have to be re realistic with ourselves. These last, these last two games were pretty fucking embarrassing for all of us. I think we can all agree on that, right? But uh, no point uh, dwelling on, on the losses. We just have to figure out what we can do to be better moving forward and to put up a better showing at IM Dallas, right? Like at the start of the year, we started off really, really bad. And we had a big chat after that. And uh, I told the guys, like, uh, look, at the, at the end of the day, we just need to focus on doing whatever we need to do to get to the major. That was the goal that we set for ourselves. At the start of the year, we established our goals and make both majors, but since CS2 is coming out, there's not going to be a second major this year, so we kind of did our goal in some way. I'm not like completely satisfied, but uh, making the major is definitely like something really important for us as a team and as an organization, so I'm glad we can make the last one. Watching your team get eliminated from the major is never a good feeling, but it's a, it's a sport, sometimes that happens and uh, sometimes you don't necessarily get the results that you want. I'm also one that always tries to stay positive. Uh, we're heading into Counter-Strike 2 and um, we're gonna remain loyal to North America. CSGO has been incredibly um, important to complexity, a really integral part of our story. It really saw the next generation of Counter-Strike talent, the next generation of larger events. So we will definitely remember CSGO fondly and uh, look forward very much to CS2 and, and what our organization is gonna be able to accomplish in that game.